everyone and happy Monday. Time for another planner picture and we have this lovely dragonfly. I think it's from Enchanted Forest. Well, I'll just try and remember. <laughs> Either that or Secret Garden. And today I'm going to try using my Castle Arts watercolour pencils. I want to have a go and wet them with my water pen and see whether the paper wrinkles up. I have just got to stand up. My voice will change volume and grab some paper to put behind the page because we're going to be wetting it. I, normally I'm not too worried about, sorry, rustling away. I'm normally not too worried about doing this, but because we've got the wet medium going on, we want to be careful, um, making sure it doesn't soak through to the page beneath. Now in my book, is sort of I treat it as a single sided book because I don't use the other page if you do then you might not want to risk this um, you may not want to colour along with me right now you might want to use a dry dry pencil conventional pencil rather than the watercolours just to see how that sort of sits on the page right the Castle Arts watercolours I'm actually been using them a little bit and I have to say I'm quite impressed with um, the range of colour compared to some of the other Castle Art set, particularly the, um, um, what's it called? <laughs> particularly the gold. The range of colours in the gold is a little odd. I'm still slightly unimpressed in the range of um, greys. We only have three, which is what I'm trying to choose at the minute for the um, body. I could use black as well, actually. Um, because... Um, you know, I'm used to, I guess with polychromos, I know I've got 120, but I'm used to having an awful lot more greys than just three. Now, the Davies grey is normally quite brown. The cool grey isn't, and we have a Payne's grey, which is normally quite purpley. So we've got, we haven't really got a light one that's going to match our darker ones, if that makes sense, because this is a brownish colour compared with those two. What I'm going to do is use the Payne's grey and the black, I think and uh, try that. I'm just trying to remember where these go because they're not in the same place in the tin which is a little odd but I will adjust that at some point. <clears throat> right starting off with my um, Payne's Grey. Now I'm thinking about doing the whole of this body, not this bit, but this sort of part of the head and the body all in grey and black. Let's come in closer. Actually it's coming quite close and we'll do the head part first. I'm going to just sharpen my pencil now. I'm a bit concerned about wetting my watercolour on this really fine piece here. So I think I'll probably leave it dry on that bit. Um, <clears throat> I see no reason why we can't mix wet and dry anyway. Because if I wet that, it's just going to go out of the lines. Because it's such a fine bit. So I'm using, sorry, the Payne's Grey, and I'm just going to go over the whole thing in the one sort of a same amount of grey. I'm not going to try and make it some bits darker and some lighter, just because it's fine. It's very fine work. It's going to be hard enough for me to try and even stay in the lines, let alone do any sort of shading. So I'm just going to go over it all in the same sort of even hand really. Now this one is a relief to be honest, this page. It's nice and easy, simple. It looks complicated but we're not going to colour it in a complicated way. We have got coming up though, um, hmm, I think, I think I'm going to do that bit just in this as well. Um, coming up um, next Monday don't turn the page if you're um, not up for a challenge should we say it's going to be a little more tricky but I am thinking already I'm going to try and make that a little bit darker here by just putting some more layers down and the same on each of these is a little bit darker towards the center and I'm going to do that bit in black I think and do the same on the other side. So just a few more layers of the pencil towards the centre. 
Yeah, so next week's is trickier and I may have I may do several videos. I will have a think once I start making and see how it just sort of goes really. There we go. Now the black I think I need to sharpen as well. I'm also quite impressed by the amount of um browns. In this set we get three nice dark browns, the grey brown and some reddy brown sepias and things like that. So I'm going to do this bit under here. I'm just checking you can actually see. You can. That's a bonus. Now when I wet this, this bit is so fine it will probably spread into the other bit. But we'll see. I'm just going to go with the flow. Do what I think. Treat them as normal pencils and then wet them and see what happens. What I have found with these is they're a little bit more crumbly when I use them than what I'm used to with castle arts. But I think that's just probably due to the nature of them being a watercolour pencil. Now I'm thinking I might just do all of this in the same tone of grey to start with. Just a gentle amount, um, not, you know, I'm not pressing hard, just letting a gentle light covering and then we'll see what happens in a little bit. So yeah, as I was saying, I'm quite impressed with these pencils. I have tried activating them with blending fluid and that was, um, I tried a video where I said I didn't like the blending fluid because it didn't seem to be wet enough, but I think it would be favourable on thinner paper because um, it wouldn't curl the paper or make it um, uh, crinkly. I found I have tried some watercolour pencils in a matchstick mouse book which is Amazon paper so it's sort of thin like copy paper and it did the paper went quite crinkly. Um, it was okay it was a single-sided picture I was very aware of the risk I was taking and I was fine with it but um, had I used just blending fluid um, maybe I wouldn't have got that. I'm going to try and add some shape to the body by building up the colour around the edges. Oh, I'm just, I can hear my son suddenly talking. I think he's doing a live at the minute. Not when this video goes out. I think he'll be back at college. Um, what date is it? Oh no, not quite. <laughs> it's the 5th, isn't it? 5th of September. He goes back on the 7th. I think they get a few days. Well, the first few days are um, um, the first few days of college are for the first years, the new students, because college is only for 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds really. The um, 16 year olds um, get a couple of days when they first start on their own so that they can sort of get used to everything a little bit before the next year start. I think it eases the staff in as well, lecturers as they call themselves. I still think of them as teachers. I don't think you start lecturing until you actually do teach at university. But anyway, it's neither here nor there, is it really? Um, so, uh, so yeah, they start back on that day and then they have to get straight back into it. But they've been doing a little bit of work most days. I didn't do any this morning. It's Monday today. But um, I took them out. I had to go out early. It's going to be a really hot, scorching hot week again. And uh, we need to go to a shop. So we thought we'd go today while it was um, a little bit um, cooler. Unfortunately, one of the things I needed to do, the shop wasn't open until a little bit later. So I'm going to have to bear the heat and pop out another day, which I'm slightly dreading. But, you know, it'll get done at some point. And uh, I, d I just don't like the heat. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to layer up a little bit on the edge. Now I know it's at this point you could try wetting it and seeing how it looks. Um, I t I'm not going to do that. I think I'm going to leave all the wetting until the end. I'm going to use the ivory black though to go around the very edge. There's a little line all the way around the edge. I don't. You'll be able to see on your copy if you can't see on mine. And I'm just going to do that in the black. And I realised that that might just spread inwards when I um, wet it. But that's okay because I want it to look darker on the edge than in the middle anyway. So I'm just going to do that. I might just help to add the shape. 
Now I was using these um, at the weekend and what I did was I um, I used them, I put a layer of colour down. Actually I, I was using a download that I bought and I my husband gave me a bit of his watercolour paper so I printed it on there. I was really surprised how it wasn't, it was smooth watercolour paper, there was very little tooth in it at all. It had a sort of um, slight horizontal stripe pattern in it. Anyway, I uh, I used it, I wetted it and then I found there were little areas where I felt they needed a little bit more colour or um, yeah, it just needed a little bit of something. So I went over some areas with the pencils and didn't re-wet it and uh, it worked really well. I was really pleased anyway with what I'd done so that was good. Um, you know, considering how um, I haven't been using them very much. But you can just do this with a normal... I'm going to put a little bit more under here. I want to emphasise that shadow there a bit more. You can just do this with a dry pencil. We don't need to worry about the wetting part. Or if you've got blending solution or something, you can blend your regular pencils with a blending solution to uh, to, um, to sort of mush smush mush no smush is the word i'm looking for right wings now we can do hmm i had an idea but my favorite color is getting short already look this is the um black which i've sharpened once and this is my favorite color <laughs> yeah so uh, you can see which is my favorite let me have a look let me have a think hmm yeah i know what we'll do We'll use some we'll use some blues and just try a little experiment. So we'll start with the ultramarine light, which is a purpley blue. You can even see the red in the um, in the tip. And we're going to do that in the middle. Now this part here, I haven't quite decided on yet. I think I've got an idea, but I'm not going to go there quite yet. So I'm going to do my darkest layer for my wing with this ultramarine. It's actually for me that doesn't look very reddish it looks quite greenish almost blue but it'll actually work really well and I'm gonna s sort of ignore Johanna's um, intricate patterns and keep it a little bit simpler I think that's gonna work best for the idea I've got in mind anyway so well, you don't have to you can use you can do all this intricacy or you can do it after with a mark it out with a pen or you know whatever you wish you know there you could use glitter pen and put little dots and dashes and and follow around those or a metallic gel pen or something but um what i want do want to do is get a darker line under here where the two wings um overlap and then I'm just spreading my colour out now. My husband tells me that the way that I use watercolour pencils is not the way that people would normally use them. Now I haven't watched any videos, tutorials, I've just played around myself on my own and just sort of developed a style that suits me and my colouring style because I'm not a painter. So for me it's about using it as if I was using a normal pencil but just using the fact that they're watercolour pencils and the water just to get a nice even blend and um, you know that's it really so that's how I'm using them but obviously it might not be the way you would want to do it but you know it's everybody's different it's just what I'm going to have a go at Okay, that's fairly even. I want them to look reasonably even. They are, it is a symmetrical, symmetrically drawn um, bug. Um, I think I'm going to skip a colour. Rather than going for the primary blue, I think I'm going to go to the sky blue. Okay. And I'm just going to go over the where I started to fade. Like this. And just take the colour further along the wing. You don't need to worry too much about covering all of those white bits of paper because once we wet it and smush it around it will do that for us, which is the joy with um, using the watercolour pencils. But we obviously need to make sure there's enough on the paper to give us the coverage that we want. We know that watercolours, if you see watercolours, they can often be quite thin 
um, but they don't show paper through so much normally. Although apparently if you want to do snow or anything with watercolour you just have to leave your paper white because the whites are, um, you can't put a white watercolour on top of a colour because it's um, see-through. Just like a, most um, coloured pencils would be. So uh, that's interesting. But um, what my husband does as a watercolour artist is he uses a white gouache um, to do things like clouds. So it sits on top. But he somehow has got it into his head lately that that's cheating and that he um, he he should be trying to make white with his watercolour. But I don't. I said, I gave him, I told him to buy a Posca pen. <laughs> Why not? We've got the tools there. Let's use them. I say, I'm going to use the cobalt turquoise next. You know, we don't... Um, we, uh, why not? Yeah, I didn't really understand that way of thinking. There's no cheating. Goodness, it's just about having fun, isn't it? Anyway, he's, um, he watches a lot of, um, YouTube channels with really serious artists and art history programs and things like that. Whereas I don't. I'm much more laid back. I do watch the YouTube videos, but I don't um, worry about it. If someone does something differently to me, good on them. And so what? We can all do things differently. Right, this is my final risky... <laughs> uh, I'm just choosing my colour carefully. Hmm. Yeah. I know. You're going, watch ya? I think that this might work interestingly well. Or it might just look like the weirdest thing in the world ever. But I rather like this sort of mix. Now, you could use, um, what I was going to use was the jade green, which is like this teal colour. But as I said, it's getting a bit short, so I thought we'd try this. Let's try something a little bit different. Once it mixes up together with that blue, I don't think it's going to look that different to the teal. But what we're going to do to uh, to sort of make sure that it um, doesn't look really out of place, I'm just trying to find a way to put my arm to do that bit, is we're going to make this bit this colour too. I'll just show you in a minute. Right. It's not quite as thick. I need it to be sort of even. It doesn't have to be really thick, but it needs to be as thick as the other one. I'm going to put a layer around here. Now, what we need to be aware of when we're using our water brush is that if we put a water brush that's just been on black or dark blue onto this colour, it will immediately um, stain it that colour to decide whether that's something we want to do or not. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to grab my water brush now. Um, I'm using a Caran d'Ache water brush and it's got a sort of fibre tip end. I've been wearing it out. Um, I'm just going to what you do is you press the button, it lets some water through. I'm just going to do that to get it going and then wipe it on some scrap paper, which is beside me. The water doesn't want to come through. There we go. I think that's it. Uh, oh, there we go. And then I know that it's sort of ready for me. And I'm going to start with this centre part here. And you can see it's quite wet. I don't know if um, the camera is picking that up. But as I spread it, I'm going to actually try and avoid those blue bits that I've done on there. And I'm going to do these ends. And this end. Now the thing with this, um, um, the castles, is that the watercolour is, can be re-wetted. So if you um, decide you want to do something a bit more with it after you can. Um, I'm going to now start in the dark bit 
and move out. Now some people start with light and move to dark. I like to start with dark and move to light. It's the way I colour and so it just feels natural for me to do that when I'm wetting. Oops, out of the lines. But I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way. I'm sure there isn't. There isn't when you're now here. Look, I'm going to try and fade it into the um, greeny yellow without getting it too far across. I talk you through it when I get you here. You see, it's quite easy to actually remove the pencil if the Right there so I'm trying to make sure I've got a bit there and spreading it along gently and I'm coming up towards the yellow so I'm trying to do smaller strokes because I just want to, enough to blend it in there without going too far up so with my stroke rather than doing a long stroke like this I'm doing a little stroke like this to just get a little bit of paint across so it doesn't go too far into that light green yellowy colour. Now you can see my accuracy with this brush, it's not brilliant, even though I picked quite a um, fine tip. My husband was showing me he's got a water brush, I think he he prefers the dough one, which is why he was happy to give me this, um, that's got a really, really fine brush tip on it. Like a paintbrush. Most water brushes do look like paintbrushes, but um, I don't like paintbrushes, so I wanted one that looked like a blending pen, which is what this is like. But you can see it's gently smoothing that colour, ridding us of all the white paper, and just making it look very nicely blended. Now I'm going to move on to the um, body. My first move is to rub my brush end tip in my book. Now I know it looks black, that it just stains. That isn't on there, it's just staining on there. There's no, I've rubbed it on my rough paper. And I'm going to think about this because I try to make it darker and nearer the center and a bit less towards the edge. I'm not sure if I can do that here. Oh, and there's the black along the bottom. So I'm just gently going at it. I've gone out of the lines again. Right here. And I can see why people might go from light to dark because when you put your first blob of water down, it seems to actually erase some of the uh, colour off. And I found that actually it does do that. Um, when I was I was doing a picture yesterday, and I put my arm, finger, splodge in the paint and then put it down. So I had a big splodge of blue paint in the middle of something that was supposed to be yellow, red? I can't remember what I was doing. But anyway, it did that. And um, so I quickly cleaned my brush off and then just picked up the um, paint onto the end of the brush and it allowed me to do that which was really brilliant didn't expect it to do that now you can see this page I don't know if you can is quite wet if you look through the back you can see a few crumples and hasn't gone through the wet hasn't gone right through it's not this paper isn't wet I can't feel it wet underneath but um, it is a little bit um, wet but that is sort of to be expected. Now this planner paper is slightly thicker than sort of conventional notebook paper. So it is going to be more resilient than maybe, um, I don't know, maybe an Amazon book or something like that. So it's worth bearing that in mind, maybe experimenting on some copy paper or something to see what you think. Now, something I wanted to experiment with, which I can't on this, particularly not at the minute, was because it's pencil, I'm wondering whether it erases. So you see how I've gone out of the line here? I wonder whether I could erase that off. I know that when I activate, um, um, what's it called, pastel with blending fluid, I can. Should we try? Do you think it's dry? We're risking it a bit because we might end up just spreading it uh, no no that definitely won't erase but there we go it doesn't matter really 
um, it's uh, it's a bit messy there, but that's nothing to do with the paint. No, it's a pencil. So there we go. But uh, there is our um, dragonfly. He's quite funky, I think. I rather like his colour. I think it works quite well. I think it's quite fun. And being able to blend with the water makes it look nice and smooth. I think my blending isn't brilliant. My painting isn't that good. But um, it just gives you a few ideas. As I say, you can just do this in pencil. Now, my other idea... Oh, I hit the tripod. I'm sorry. I was just reaching around. Is I do like to put some sparkle onto um, onto wings and things. So I have my jelly roll sparkly pen and what I'd really like to do is to go around here and add some sparkle and I'm hoping my paint is dry enough to uh, do this effectively. And I'm just going around the edge. I'm not going to follow you know, I said you could follow all the patterns and things you can, but I'm just going to go around the edge of each main wing, so not those little bits there, just to add a little bit of sparkle. But as I said, you could go over the whole thing. You could go over all the little details. You know, it's completely up to you. This is slightly awkward because I can't risk putting my hand down in the wet paint which seems to dry really quickly but I don't want to risk touching it with my hand because because it's me it'll end up <laughs> being a disaster there we go so now if I tip that to the light um, which way is our light I don't know if you can see that at all hmm well there's some sparkle. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to leave him there and finish there. So as I say, it's fairly straightforward, fairly simple. If you didn't use a water brush, it would be even quicker, you know. But I thought it was quite fun to show you. Um, I had fun as well, so that was good. And I don't think the page has really wrinkled that much. It has a bit. Um, I think, you know, if you were colouring on the back, it might feel a bit ick. You know, but I think it would straighten. I don't think it'd be too bad. I find if I use Posca pen, I don't like colouring on the back. The page feels really thick acrylic paint on the back. You can feel it. And I do worry it might chip off. Whereas this is just a little bit wrinkled. I think it might even flatten back out if you put rested something on it. So there we go. Um, that was a bit of fun. So there is this week's um, page. I hope that was okay and fun for you. A bit different. I don't think I've seen a dragonfly done in this colour. I don't think I've seen a dragonfly this colour. So, <laughs> but uh, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really lovely Monday and enjoy the rest of your week. And happy colouring.